Nice question. <laughs> Big shelf. Honey badger. Shark dog. Shark dog. Bear shark. Are you seeing? Oh, here, you're not seeing me. You no. not know. There we are. Oh my Let's God. Let's try this again. Perfect. Hi. Okay. We're going to start again. Here we go. Hi, it's Jason Gordon from ThatShelf.com in Canada. I saw the film at Cannes. Congratulations. It's nice to see that it got bought and is being put all over the world. So congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, I have a great deal of love for Icelandic cinema and Icelandic saga that are told in uh, on the big screen. I'm wondering if you could talk about how this story came about, how where, where the idea came from. It started with the uh... Visuals, I, yeah, it's a, I was collecting like a lot of reference and photos and drawing some, doing some drawings of uh, these creatures and somehow just collecting it uh, in a book. And uh, then uh, my pro producers uh, introduced me to Sean. And uh, after he saw the book, we start working uh, yeah, we start meeting every week for many years. How did you, uh, how did the project come to you? Um, well, Valdemar um, flew to London and brought me his visual book mm -hmm. and the script and a, a book of collected poems from Sean. And I think I just got like drawn into his world. And I, you know, it's, it was quite magical to, to, to feel how the movie came to life when I was like, I was reading the script and I had all these quite disturbing and dark images in my head at the same time. And, and, and I started to realize that you are a man that communicates in images and pictures and photos and not in words. Um, and, and it just immediately felt like I'm, I'm like you, you know, I kind of, I'm a big fan of the Icelandic cinema and, you know, the, the folklore and that kind of dark, moody complex twisted reality so so it really felt like a gift given to me i mean for me it always feels like uh having been to Reykjavik and having been to iceland it always feels that it is absolutely magical place but also very familiar place and a very boring place it's all of these things all at <laughs> once and, and i think that that's uh, the people want to think of it as this land of just elves but it's also this land of people having fights during marriages. So it's both of these things at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, if you could talk about how you've seen the shifting landscape of Icelandic storytelling, if you could talk about how you go from having something that's on the page into something that's on the big screen. Uh, we, we, we were you know, spending a lot of time finding the right location because uh, you know, we, it, it was so important uh, to have, you know, like, uh, where we could shoot almost like 360 and we had everything around the farm and we could also be shooting from inside the farm and just out of every window. So, you know, we, we probably drove around Iceland two times and uh, yeah, I made the, the farm out of clay and took a photos and uh, did some drawings. And so I was he was basically it. looking for the, for the farm that would match his clay farm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I, I think it, it did not, uh, you didn't find it. No. You had to compromise. Yeah. Life is full of compromises. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I was very happy with the location that uh, we found. And uh, somehow it was uh, <clears throat> even, even more interesting because of the layout, you know. And if you could talk about uh, from an acting point of view, this is a tonally complicated film. It's it's there's these moments of intimacy and these moments of broad violence, and then these moments of great tenderness. Mm. You talk about that shift. You're no you're no stranger to this kind of shift. Mm. You've made a whole career of being this kind of sophisticated <laughs> actor. But but if if you could talk about the unique challenges and the unique rewards of this film. Mm. Um. Well, I feel like it was it's. I love the simplicity in how the story was told. And that is like that uh, Valtemar and Sean had the bravery to hold back and to hold back and hold back and then slowly let it crack and like zip out. Like what is like, what's going on underneath? It's almost like an Icelandic volcano, you know, and you start to see the cracks and then all of a sudden in the <laughs> end, like there comes the big, you know, the firestorm and the, and the, and the, and the lava that would eat you. And, burn you um, and Maria is is a little bit the same you know she's holding 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 
because she can't bear it's too much you know and and the pain of you know the lost child in the beginning makes it impossible for her to to be in those in that emotional space and she becomes she's purely um surviving and then when atta is born that becomes the you know the opportunity to, for her to be to become a mother again and she takes it and she's not going to let go and she will just uh, um erase and and destroy what needs to be destroyed to hold on to this happiness and this possibility to heal and uh, yeah Iceland, you've got a sort of, uh, it's literally being ripped apart between North America and Europe. That's literally what Iceland is. Mm -hmm. As a performer, you have Hollywood and you have European art cinema, and you've had to navigate both of these worlds. Mm -hmm. Just wondering if you could talk about your own navigation of that fissure between something that is very big and popular and maybe have a giant budget, might, maybe might, might be less artistically rewarding, mm -hmm. and something that might be a little bit smaller but has... Uh, uh, slightly more sophistication, slightly more artistic intent. If you could talk about it as an actor choosing the roles and navigating that fissure. Boom, nice question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that it's, um, that is a balance and it's a constant um, kind of friction. And, and I think when La Lamb came to me, I, I, it was so clear in, in, in my body. It was like a physical reaction to the material that I've been needing this, that I've been starving for exactly this, like art house European cinema. <laughs> and I felt so grateful because that's kind of where I started. And I love, I love doing those big, more commercial films as well, but my heart is in the art house cinema. And, and I felt like that's where I found my voice as an actress when I was young. And I've been wanting to go back there. And I think, you know, to juggle between those two, it's, um, I would say that it's it's not hard if you if you keep looking at yourself as an actress. If you start looking at yourself as a celebrity, uh, then you will lose track of yourself and then you get lost. I mean, for me, I have um, a son that constantly reminds me of reality, <laughs> who is just like, you're not number one on the call sheet right here. So, so I would say that um, um, you know I would love to be more in the dark waters of Valdemar Johansson's uh, creation and people like him, because that's where I feel at most, most at home. And very last question, Valdemar, you worked with Son. I know the great thing about Iceland is that everybody knows everybody. <laughs> you, you walk down the street and there's Bjork and there's another member of the Sugar Cubes. Here you are in this intimate circumstance. If you could talk about the role of the community of Icelandic filmmakers, the people who made Rams and maybe the effect that they had on this film, that sort of thing about what it's like making films within the community of the Icelandic cinematic uh, collective. Uh, it's it's so nice because you 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 know uh, you you know almost everybody and uh, and uh, you know for example uh, before we before I start shooting uh, Lamp, you know I I met some of the is some directors just to you know, ask them some question, what I should uh, be aware of and stuff like that. And, you know. But it's a very generous uh, community. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, not competitive. Like other countries can be quite harsh. I would say that you guys are very much supporting each other. Yeah, also, not like Sweden. Sweden, they're all crazy. <laughs> oh, and also <laughs> like, uh, you know, because I've been uh, working, uh, you know, as a part of a crew for so long time that, uh, you know, I, they are, you know, it's all of my friends that were also working uh, in LAMP. And uh, yeah, I've been uh, working in almost every department. So that was also very helpful uh, because yeah, it's just like a family. Perfect. And again, it's a weird family where sometimes the baby at the end is this weird creature, but sometimes it's very powerful. Sort of like your movie. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much. Thank what a you. pleasure to speak with you. And uh, till next time, all the best. Uh -huh. Nice speaking to you. Take care. No me. <laughs>